Hi, and welcome to another edition of Old History. I want to get a new series going where I talk about the history of various places in a few minutes or less. I think I'd like to call it Fast History. So anyway, the first video is going to be over the American Inca Company. Also, please be sure to head over to the Old History Facebook page and participate in a contest I have going for your chance to win some Beard Care products from the Beard Guy and Friends Company. But first, are you sick of your beard feeling like sandpaper? Can you not find the right beard oil? We all go visit my good friend Jason over at the Beard Guy and Friends for all your beardly needs. It used to be that when you'd ask the older folk of Hamlin County, Stinky Inca would get brought up occasionally, not as often in today's time, but less and less people will remember how you could once smell Inca clean across the county. The American Inca Company was established and founded by Yaquez Cohenrod Hartogs in late September of 1928 in Asheville, North Carolina by a Dutch firm called something I'm not going to try to pronounce, uh, which in turn was formed shortly after World War I when several other Dutch and German companies merged into one giant one. Shortly after the Asheville plant was built, it was supervised by engineers and technicians from the Netherlands to train the new workers. And within a few years, the workers had learned enough to run the plant on their own. And Inca became an American company with an American workforce. It was also on the original Fortune 500 list. Too. During the Great Depression, the Asheville plant experienced a lot of growth and had almost 2,500 people employed who were getting a 40-hour work week at a time when most of the country was experiencing mass layoffs uh, and poverty. In 1944, the company was seeking to build another plant and the executives were eyeballing a key spot in Lowland, Tennessee, which is in Hamlin County. The location would provide rail access by way of the Southern Railroad and would be next to the Nolichucky River. Construction of the Lowland campus would begin in 1944 and would be finished by 1948. It would come to employ many people from the surrounding counties and it would be one of the largest employers in that area. In March of 1950, a strike broke out when workers at the Rayon plant walked out. Before long, the company advertised for replacement workers. Tension built as people from local and surrounding communities appeared at the Inca gates to apply for jobs to replace the striking workers. In the violence that followed, sh shots were fired, cars were damaged, and a home was dynamited. Tennessee Governor Gordon Browning dispatched the National Guard to restore order. Before its end, the strike became on the national front page news and was a subject of on-site congressional hearings held in Morristown, led by Hubert Humphrey for the Democratic majority. By the time the 1980s rolled around, heavy competition from fiber manufacturers in Asia caused Inca to sell the plant to another owner and it changed names to BASF Corporation Fibers Division who ran the plant until around 1992 when it sold to Lensing AG and by 2002 the plant was bought by a company that renamed it Liberty Fibers. In 2005 the plant's equipment and assets went into liquidation due to Liberty's bankruptcy. During its operation this plant manufactured rayon, polyester, nylon and other products including asbestos. The site became an area of high interest to the EPA and the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation as they were concerned about the hazardous materials that were handled at the plant. And in 2006, a cleanup of massive efforts uh, began, during which several of the older buildings were demolished. During its existence, Inca opened up several opportunities for other industries such as coal mining in Kentucky and the Virginias. Transportation will also be needed for the hazardous materials used in rayon production, which positively affected the Southern Railroad. During its peak, the American Inca Company would have more than 11 different plants, with each plant being comparable to its own small city, and would go on to have more than 11,000 employees nationwide. 